Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. For more information on Anne and her work, please follow these links, which will also be posted below every video. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. All right. Welcome. Hello, Anne, to this Friday. Hello, Jost. Okay. Um, this should be another interesting one. Last time we spoke about um, different perspectives of the similimum. What is the similimum? And uh, we also got to know what your idea of the similimum is. Um, in brief, that there is a similimum for one person's life. Mm -hmm. So to say, right? Yes. Um, and this, I mean, uh, what we heard when the sensation idea came up, we heard that there is a um, a human song and a another song, the, yes. the other song it was called, this famous book. Mm -hmm. And um, meaning also when you administer the similimum that the, it cures this other song, so to say, it disappears and what remains is only the human song. Yeah. What is what is your idea of vital disturbance or what the vital level is and so on? Would you please explain that? Yes. You know, we have to use metaphors and and images. So the other song was actually like a good metaphor. You would say like this song disturbance, like on your radio, you uh -huh. have another. Uh, and another music, another voice, another song coming in, so it's, it's uh, um, disharmonious. Mm -hmm. Your song can be heard and the other can be heard clearly and, and they interfere and they interrupt each other. So the first idea was, yeah, it's good, let's get rid of the other one. You know, like, <laughs> let's make it, let's make our receiver, our radio receiver, let it, let it, let it have a clear, uh, how to say reception, but mm -hmm. if you think it over, you know it comes down to the um, already very known quote like, "Is there something like a healthy lion?" You know the quote. It means if a person needs luckily you need him because the other song in him is the song, okay, and you give him luckily you need him. What is left? Is he a healthy yeah. lion, or is the lion song gone? Yes. Uh, so <laughs> you have these two camps, the camp, mm -hmm. the camp that thinks there is something like a healthy lion, now your patient became a healthy lion, so he's still luckily an inum, but in a healthy state, and then there's another camp who thinks, no, the lion has gone, now the patient is left. Mm -hmm. And to my idea, if the patient is left and he sings his song, he still sings his individual song, doesn't he? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. In my understanding, the lion can't be gone because the lion is his individual way of being, his individual mm -hmm. way of perceiving himself and the world. And it can be healthy, it can be harmonious, you can be yourself singing your own lion song. Yeah. Yourself but not producing any symptoms. That means there's a harmonious way of being yourself. Mm -hmm. If you produce symptoms, then it must mean that this in yourself, something disharmonious, something disturbed, is trying to take to get your attention, catch your attention by producing symptoms. Mm -hmm. And by, by the particular pattern of symptoms it produces, it will make clear to the homeopath, oh, this person needs luckily a leader. That's his right. remedy to, to get him back in harmony. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. And to me, is then a healthy liar. Right. Um, can you then equate your idea of this healthy lion, or is the would you say that the the vital disturbance is equal to individuality or to maybe even soul, if this word fits in here? I think so. I think it is. Since we do have to individualize, <clears throat> mm -hmm. to prescribe, and the more we individualize, the more precise we prescribe. Let me say it is on the on the deeper level. Mm -hmm. What is the deepest level is where you are unique, where you are different than anybody else. Of course, yeah. we already talked about this. It is impossible <laughs> to go that far as a homeopath, but we come as close as we can to that most individual picture we can have of the patient in front of us mm -hmm. and then find the best matching remedy which is also a matter of fine-tuning mm -hmm. we have a group and then we try to all the group and then we try to get down to a species that matches as as well as possible to uh, produce or to provoke uh, some reaction and mm -hmm. the reaction that is provoked by our remedy, we don't know the dynamic. We just, by empirical knowledge and observation, see it happen all of the time. You see it happen, but we don't know how it happens. I do have a theory, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> you want to hear? <laughs> While we're at it. Than, it's nothing more than a hypothesis, but you know, Often I hear or I read that homeopathy is a resonance, um, it's a resonance medicine, if, if not the energy remedy, uh, energy medicine, but that doesn't say anything at all. But the resonance medicine to me also doesn't explain because what happens is resonance. I agree, there has to be resonance, otherwise, nothing happens at all. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's why if you give a remedy that is really off, you know, far off from the remedy that the patient needs, nothing happens, not even resonance. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the curative effect of a remedy, I don't think, is based on the resonance because the resonance doesn't cure. If you have your guitar and you know you have your, your, your touch a, a string and then the other octave higher string will start to resonate but that's all what it does i mean the two start to move because of resonance but that's it it's nothing particularly curative happening at all while and that's only a theory you know uh -huh. while i think if you can find as a homeopath the species in nature, whatever species we use, whatever substance we use that symbolizes, that contains somehow the information that matches the, the pattern of the patient, the substance is always in a perfect state because there's nothing in nature, there's nothing out there that is not in a perfect state, only mm -hmm. human. Okay. We can be disturbed, why? Because we, you know, we have a mind and we have all kind of <laughs> attributes to disturb, to be disturbed. But in nature, there isn't. Everything is blissfully happy and perfect. So mm -hmm. if we can take a substance that matches the pattern of disturbance, the original pattern and the need of the patient, then we give actually the perfect example to the disturbed example and by entrainment and I think that is the dynamic underneath or could be the dynamic underneath that actually provokes this curative effect in the patient like having a strong enough example of the perfect picture you get my point? It sounds like tuning an instrument. It, is it a sounds like tuning an instrument when you have a guitar or you have a piano and the, 
a tone or you play a chord and the tone is out of tune, you um, increase the tension of yeah. a few strings so that another tone reaches the right pitch so that it fits in with the harmony. Yeah. Is that and what you mean? You have resonance. Yeah, you get, then you have resonance, but resonance is rather the result. It's a byproduct. Yeah. yeah, it's a result rather than the dynamic. Mm. I see, I see. Uh huh, all right. Um, <clears throat> would that mean then entrainment that what happens if you for a long time give a remedy which is not in resonance or not in the right remedy, so to say? Well, Harman dealt with that, I think, in his organon. Mm -hmm. um, when he uh, wrote these chapters on um, natural states, natural diseases, which is our state, yes. <laughs> natural disease, mm -hmm. and artificial diseases, which is a result of the remedy that is not suitable. All right. So actually, what is happening in approving is the same thing, but in approving, we deliberately take remedies until we have symptoms that don't belong to us. Mm -hmm. And if you take a remedy, let's say once, and it's not matching your state, and it's um, uh, less intense, hmm, then nothing will happen at all. That's what Harman yeah. said. If your original state, your original disease is stronger than the new one, that is um, a natural or is a secondary or whatever, it's not fitting to your system, and yeah. you, won't even, you won't even notice it. If it's stronger, if the second disease is stronger, <coughs> then it will not take you for a while. Yeah. So you, you come in the, in the state of the second disease, it runs its course, and then it fades away and you're back to where you were before in your original state. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what happens when we take a remedy that is not suitable at all, not even partial. So it, yeah. when it's too weak, nothing happens when it's strong, it imprints for a short period of time, and the short period of time depends on the potency and susceptibility, I guess, and just fades. The away. perseverance of the homeopath, <laughs> of course, as well. <clears throat> and um, while we're at this, the do you have any idea then what a partial remedy does? Yeah, sometimes it takes away symptoms, and they never come back. Mm -hmm. So we, we talked about this uh, in our like, case management, but what happens after you gave a remedy that you thought was the right remedy, of course you always do, and yeah. it, it turns out to, um, to have taken away some symptoms and left some other symptoms and sometimes uh, provoked a new symptom, but that is rather rare, mm -hmm. new symptom most likely will not persist in the course of time, but some symptoms do come back and then when you repeat remedy they won't go away but some symptoms go away forever like you since you took carcinosum for instance this and this symptom never came back okay yeah. fine so probably it dealt with that symptom and um there's no need to produce it again so it's not a suppression or yeah, it could be a suppression if the symptom goes away and something else starts yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in the months after that, then you know you suppressed it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. That's possible with a partial remedy that some symptoms are suppressed, but it's also rather rare. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think one has to insist really for a long time and with yeah. repeated um, mm -hmm. doses to produce this, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what we call the, the, the zigzag method. So, sometimes, and also it's already an Hanuman's organ. Sometimes you give a partial um, suitable remedy, some symptoms go away, some symptoms persist, then you give a, a remedy on the persisting uh, symptoms, or so the new picture, so, so called new picture, then some symptoms go away, some are still there, then you give another remedy on the leftovers. And sometimes, two years later, new symptoms come, and so it's like a zigzag way to cure, which is also legitimate, because if yeah. you don't see 
the civil women, and in many cases we don't see it. And the only way, instead of going straight, then you go zigzag. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, <clears throat> of course, this is um, often you know, in this uh, situation we're leaving out the practical the practical aspects. You know, we because we cannot know if we give a similimum and we just give a remedy. And mm -hmm. if it's a partial or a not, not fitting remedy or a AC minimum remedy, we don't know before. Mm -hmm. So we have no um, knowledge of, of the effect that it will have in the, in, the, in the treatment, so to say, whether it will work or not in this way. But um, for the sake of, of theory, right, we are, yes. we are speaking in this sense. Um, so with a zigzag in this in the theory um because also i think often we don't see patients long enough to know whether we really have eliminated all the the symptoms or not and most of them are fine and happy and that's it and mm -hmm. um, once things that bothered them are gone so uh, with the zigzag method um, we can also arrive without ever prescribing the minimum at a at a cure. That depends on what you call cure, and yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> we always come back to the es essential points eh? because yeah. mm -hmm. that, it's where it all starts. What is to be cured? What do you what do you consider a cure? Mm. And I keep referring to Haraman this time. I don't know why, but one of his first aphorisms is to restore the sick to health. That is what we're supposed to do. So he's talking about the sick. I know he's not very um, consequent in his writing and he's contradictory and other aphorisms and all that, but that's my reading of the argument. We treat the sick, which is the person. We don't treat the disease. So that's a crucial difference. If you treat diseases, then you treat expressions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And very often the zigzag method, not always, but very often, is aimed at taking the symptoms away, which is taking the expressions away yeah. while leaving the source of the problem untouched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't say it doesn't work, it's only that it's a different purpose. You can't yeah. take symptoms away, mm -hmm. but you leave the person untouched. Of course, the person will be more happy if his symptoms are gone. That's clear. Yeah. But he will be the same. In his heart and soul, he will be the same. While as if your purpose is to treat the person, like the, the similar prescriber, <laughs> always try to reach at this point that you are, that you match the, the basic being of the patient mm -hmm. while taking his symptoms as expressions of this as, as the, you know the dots that you have to combine in order to see the pattern of this disturbance because he he has no other way to verbalize it or to express it than by signs and symptoms in mind and body as Hanuman already said so we take all these signs and symptoms in mind and body not to get them away but as stepping stones as dots to combine them and to see the pattern of the disturbance which is as we said last time one because you're individual and it's it will stay with you all your life and if we reach at that remedy and that substance if you can find it if you can give it then we see the patient as a person change transforms it's not his symptoms going away it's not his his headache going away it's a different person altogether or or as a colleague of mine would say is the better version of himself mm -hmm. he's okay with himself he's still himself but now okay with himself yeah he's you know his conditions to be okay have either loosened so much or either fallen away altogether. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, as Fitulka said, we aim at not only health but also at freedom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting that you mentioned him because I was also thinking of this. That's 
because it was already Vitulka's aim or definition of health yeah. that it's a greater freedom, yeah. liberty to to be you. To be you, exactly. So it's not only about taking away the symptoms, which in itself is already great. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. You can do that. Really quite, quite an achievement uh, compared to uh, other therapies, right? Yeah. Yeah, then your patient will be absolutely happy. But basically, what we're trying to do is something different. And that's why often I think homeopathy is not well understood because I don't know any other you know, healing method that is really trying to do this. Yeah, it has the potential. Oh, it, as a side effect, fine. But I mean, as, as main uh, uh, purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, again, in theory, um, and let's say we're aiming at a similar prescription, but we can't figure it out, the similimum, we might still end up at a with partial remedies than at a transformation of the of the patient, you think? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure because what we're saying is you're taking away the symptoms. And since the symptoms are only the expression, you're taking away the expressions. Yeah. yeah. And then hoping that you know as a side effect the source will dry up? I don't think so. It's not the way it works, it's the other way around. The source dries up first, and then as a side effect, as a result, expressions are not longer there because there's no need, there's nothing that fuels them. Right, right. There's no disturbance to be expressed. <laughs> so for a zigzag method to be successful, we also would have to end up sooner or later at the similimum, yeah, right? In fact, we should, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I would like to come back to the um, to the your idea of vital disturbance. Then, could we say then that the vital disturbance is probably a very good name for it? Then, right, because it's the vitality is disturbed, and the remedy brings it back into. Uh, Harmony? Is that it? It's not that there is something on top of it um, which is the, the disturbing factor and you take away the, the, the factor, so to say, and uh, then what remains is just perfection or... Uh, just perfection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then we are perfect and the same. Yeah. There's only, there's only one. So we have to be all similar. <laughs> this we obviously are not. That's another reason to believe that after the remedy, your state can't be gone. Because what would be left of you? Your humanness. But, you know, we all have humanness to start with. That's a given. Mm -hmm. That's still different. So mm -hmm. if you take away the difference, then then your sameness would, would be left over. And then we would be all the same. And obviously that's not the mm -hmm. case. But that was not your question. Your question was... Um, it's it's vital, and as a matter of fact, it's a bit of a um, confusing confusing words because you know Hahnemann calls it a dynamis, and his concept of the dynamis is also contradictory from one yeah. after to another. So I won't go into that. I only yeah. tell you <laughs> that my reading is the dynamis level five. Uh, although Hahnemann probably meant, I don't know what he meant, but I can conclude it from his aphorism, sometimes uh, pointed at what I would call level two. Level two, to remind you very shortly, level one is you know, your physical body, level two is your energetic aspect of your physical body. It's the visible aspect of your physical body. So it's the level of, of you know, the level of, of uh, energy, your energy distribution in the body, um, your, like the pain, the hormones, the neurological problems, uh, you know, this, what we mostly would call generalities operate. So also you could say your amount of vitality in your body is level two. Are you very uh, energetic? Do you have a lot of energy? Are you very vital or are you worn out? And, and, 
titles and so on. So that is level two, actually. Vitality, in, in, in that sense, is level two. Uh -huh. And vital level is, um, according to me, and that's why I'm saying it's a bit confused mm. uh, in, in, in the words, in the language, Vital level is something completely different. Eh? It's level five. It's beyond mind and body. So it's not physical. It's it's not mental. It's beyond. Eh? Yeah. It's sensation level, if you want. Eh? But sensation level is like limited, limiting it to a sensation, while while vital level actually points to the fact that it's vital to you. It's your core thing. Exactly because. Now that you bring this back with the sensation method, there was the idea there is a vital sensation, mm -hmm. and the vital sensation seemed to be equal to vital disturbance. Mm -hmm. And if you give the remedy that corresponds to this, the vital sensation disappears, so the disturbance disappears. Yeah, yeah. and uh, this is what we began with. Um, in your view, this can't happen because. It is your individuality, so to say, that is disturbed then, right? So it can't go, it can't go. It's the same as the healthy lion's question. Mm -hmm. If the lion goes, it's only human. But if the buttercup goes, this is also a human left. Are they the same? No. They're still individually very different. Mm -hmm. So individuality can never be taken away. Your face can be washed away and, and become the the perfect face or, or your your fingerprints like there's only one perfect fingerprint that doesn't make sense to me you know mm -hmm. so it, it is not something that can go it sometimes i use the comparison like if you have if you have a gastritis if you have an upset stomach you will feel it on all levels mm -hmm. so you you will feel pain you will feel uh, worry you will have uh, thoughts about it that maybe you have cancer and, and you're incurable and whatnot so then if you finally get a remedy or a medicine whatever allopathic or, or homeopathy remedy to take away this problem in your stomach your worries are gone because your pain is gone and so your energy comes back and your appetite comes back and you feel happy and but your stomach is still there Mm -hmm. isn't gone. It's just a noticed. Now it does its work in the background and and it's healthy and it does what it's supposed to do, but you still have stomach. Yeah. And I think the vital disturbance is something similar. When disturbed, you know, it makes itself noticed on all levels. Yeah, you have a pain, you have a discomfort, your, your, your energy goes down, your, 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 your mind is upset, you're full of worries and delusions, what not. And these are all expressions of, an, of, of, of something, of this vital thing in us that is disturbed. In the same way that an organ can be disturbed. Mm -hmm. you remedy, your vital sensation goes back to the background and does its work in silence. You know, leaves mm -hmm. you alone, leaves you in peace, <laughs> and you know it's still there, but it does its work as it's supposed to do, yeah, without without making itself noticed. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. So it's um, do you equate it to? Um, and this is not a religious question, but would you say that this is the the soul then? I don't and know. And there is a there is a affected or disturbed um, disturbance there. You could say that as we have this once in a lifetime appearance here on earth, in this particular form, with this particular combination of whatever traits, inherited physical traits, inherited psychological traits, you know, and then whatever life lessons we came here to. To, to learn whatever mm -hmm. you know story we wrote in our big book before we came you, know, you could say yes the somewhere there the remedy is an aspect and mm -hmm. you know like harmonizes this whole journey mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have over ourselves our okayness with ourselves which basically as a 
mental concept we know we are. Mm -hmm. We are all perfect in our imperfectness or in our differences or in our lessons we have to learn. We, we, we would think so from a child, you know. Mm -hmm. Children are okay, you know. They're, you know, little babies, you know, they're okay. They're perfect in themselves. It's only later we feel like we have a whole lot of flaws and conditions and whatnot in order to be loved. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think so of a baby. Every baby is born on earth with deserves to be loved. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but later on, you know, and the mind comes in and, and we, we have all kind of experiences and, and you know we get we get scars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Is this the soul? Might be an aspect. I don't know. I see. I see. Yeah. yeah. It was just my curiosity. It doesn't really matter in terms of the homeopathic treatment. Um, okay. So to sum up, we understood that um, we're not talking about something separate from your individuality, from the core of you. When we talk about vital disturbance, for you, this is the same. Yeah. And this uh, dynamis, this life force, can be disturbed, and the similimum will bring it back into harmony. Mm -hmm. And um, also, we, you told us, um, what is the theory for you to, to bring it back into harmony? Um, which you call entrainment. Mm -hmm. What happens with wrong remedies, with partial remedies, mm -hmm. also the, um, a direct as opposed to also a zigzag way to cure and what is to be cured. Okay, great. Um, yeah, we covered so, a lot of topics, right? <laughs> see, exactly, yeah. Um, I think we covered it completely now uh, this aspect and next time I would like to expand on this a little more in the um, in the with the case management in, in the more practical terms this was more a philosophical episode and next time we would go into that okay okay next time we go practical <laughs> all right <laughs> thank you very much Anna yeah it was my pleasure again I look forward to the next time me too. Bye, Oz. Take care. Bye. Bye.